Before you be seated, look at your seatmate and say to your seatmate, Excited ka na ba? Go to the other side and say, Excited ka na ba? And everybody say, We are all excited! Amen! Give God the best clap of praise and be seated in the presence of the Lord. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to our second worship service here in JIL Cornerstone. JIL Cornerstone. Nako, nagkumustahan pa. Nagkukumustahan pa, ayun. And a special welcome to our first batch delegates arrival of the CYN Summit, CYN America Summit. Our 48 ba o 41 delegates from JIL Manitoba in in Winnipeg. Tayo nga kayo. Tayo para ma-recognize kayo ng ating mga... There you go. Praise the Lord. JIL Cornerstone, give them the best clap of welcome. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. And one of our brothers is back there from JL Kitchener. Also CYN. Ah, nalimutan ko pangalan. Pasensya ka na. Masyado kong excited. But anyway, it's just six more days. Tell your seatmate, six days na lang pala. While we are praising and worshiping God, while we are praising and worshiping God today with that anointed praise and worship, the Holy Spirit whispered to me, He said, are, you are already blessed in my moving in your worship service. Be more excited of what I will do on your 25th anniversary. Hallelujah! I remember last other week during my short communion to the Lord, a communion of five days. On my third day, I was on my knees in asking God, saying to him, Lord, remember us. Remember us on the 13th of August, 2 p.m. at Metro Toronto Convention Center. Every person that will be there are expectant of something that is coming from you. And the Holy Spirit whispered in his most gentlest, caring, softest words and say, Bong, do not worry. I will surely bless your 25th anniversary celebration. That's why, brothers and sisters, if you know someone that you want to be touched by the Spirit of the living God, if you know someone that is seeking, looking, or just simply wanting to know if there is God, bring them this coming Saturday. And let the God who created the heavens and the earth, the God who has created us wonderfully and beautifully, let Him make a showcase in the midst of God's people. Give Him the praise. Hallelujah. One more time, everybody arise, please. Everybody on your feet, lift up your hands. And I sense the anointing of the living God flowing in this place. Holy Ghost, freely move. Freely move. Lift up your hands. Those who want His touch, and I pray Him to touch you, even right now. Let you be delivered from all forms of heaviness and worries and condemnation. Be set free from all of physical fatigue, stress in your emotion. Be set free and let the liberating power of the Holy Spirit come upon you that you might hear what the Spirit is saying. Holy Ghost, move. We pray, move. Move in this place. Yes, lift up that hand. Mm. Holy Ghost, I come to worship in your presence. Holy Ghost, I come that hands lifted up and allow him to bless I come to offer up the sacrifice of praise Holy Ghost I come to worship 
Sing it to Jesus, Son of God, I come. Son of God, I come to worship in your presence. Son of God, I come to magnify your name. Son of God, I come to offer up the sacrifice of praise. Son of God, I come to worship. Now to the Father who sent His Son, saying, Father God, I come to worship in Your presence. Father God, I come to magnify Your name. Father God, I come to offer up my sacrifice of praise. Father God, I come to worship. Now everybody, hands lifted up. I come to pray. passing by like a river and like a wind somebody is being touched by him mm. keep playing the instrument the Holy Ghost is setting someone free someone free from burden someone free from that fear and sorrow lift up that hand and let there be touch of God's peace upon your soul. Listen to his word. John chapter 4, beginning verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh to the city of Samaria, which is called Sichar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, 
How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh, drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who is it that said unto thee, Give me to drink? Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. The well is deep. From whence then thou hast this living water? Art thou, art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast now is not thy husband. And that sayest thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say, that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye not know, know not what. We worship what we, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jew. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in his spirit and in truth for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in His spirit and in truth. The woman said unto Him, I know that the Messiah cometh, when, which is called Christ. When He is come, He will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee, I am he. May God bless the reading of His Word. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. And let me share to you in the next 15 minutes a short message titled, The Woman at the Well. Everybody say, The Woman at the Well. One more time, The Woman at the Well. One of the interesting truth about the Word of God, it has so many records of so many stories of many unknown, unnamed person. It has so many unique narratives of so many events that happens during the three years ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of them is this unnamed, unknown Samaritan woman. According to one commentary, many of the characters in the Bible were intentionally unnamed. For the purpose that each and every one of us will be able to connect ourselves, identify ourselves to their situation. There are just five points, if I will be granted by the Holy Spirit to complete, that I would like to share to you regarding this message. Are you ready to hear the Word of God? Look at your seatmate. Share to your seatmate. I'm not only ready, I am prepared. Amen. Jesus Christ, according to the narratives, wants to go to another place. And in verse 1, it says that it is, excuse me, it is from uh, the place of Judea into Galilee, and they are passing through a city called Samaria. The Samarians are people who, who uh, during that divided kingdom, about 700 B.C., were captured by the Assyrian king. The divided kingdom of Israel, that one is in based in Jerusalem and another is based in Samaria. But during the time of the 
so-called invasion of the Assyrian king, the Israelites in Samaria were consumed by the conquering people. Therefore, they became unknown and seemingly unidentified, unidentified like those many Filipinos who came to Canada and then intermarry and a Canadian people, their children and their children's children, their children's children do not know whether they are Canadian or Filipino anymore. Are you with me? Look at your seatmate. Say to your seatmate, you look like Canadian. But you also look like Indian. <clears throat> <laughs> because of the uh, passing. Anyway, point number one, looking for water. Jesus Christ was looking for water. Of course, it was already 12 hour, and probably they were already walking for six hours because the sunrise is the beginning of the journey of many Israelites from one place to another. And because there is no transportation like what we are enjoying today, so a short travel, a distance of approximately about 10 miles will take them many hours. So he was po po caught in the middle of the, of the city of Samaria uh, and his disciples looked for food. Because he was in his human body, according to Philippians chapter 2, beginning verse 5, let this mind be in you who was is also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but found himself in no reputation. He was found in the likeness of men. Everybody say, Jesus Christ was found in the likeness of men. He was not just man. He was God who found himself in the likeness of men because his intention is to save all humanity from their sin. In his human nature, like many of us, we are getting tired, hungry, and thirsty. This time, he was thirsty. He sat on besides the well, and during the time, the culture is, the tradition is, only women are to get water, to get water from that well. We know that from the Old Testament to the New Testament, there are so many records that it's the women who are getting water. I don't know why, but one thing I'm sure, when the women gives you water, you better drink it. Hmm. Especially husband, when your wives give you water, better drink it because they are sending a message. And what is the message? You are thirsty. <laughs> so, Jesus Christ is looking for water. And the woman came. According to the verse, now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied of, with his journey sat in the well. And it was six hour. And there cometh a woman draw, uh, of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. That water is just for refreshing the body of Jesus as we are drinking waters. We eat just to refresh the body. But the intention of Jesus is not just to ask the woman for water. Jesus Christ, as He usually does, want the person to know there are better things in this world that people are seeking and that is the things which are eternal. That's when, why the woman, when the woman said, when, uh, when the woman said, you are a Jew, I am a Samaritan. Why are you talking to me? But before that, Jesus Christ in the narrative, when the woman, when the woman said, uh, when Jesus Christ asked for water, the woman seemingly refused, then Jesus revealed to the woman on that well that what she is just trying to find out and discover is just a temporary water that in bondage her to go back always into that well to get, get water. Jesus said to her, if you only knew who is the one asking you for water, you might have asked him for a water that is everlasting. Ladies and gentlemen, many of us might be like that woman who keeps on coming to and pro into that well that we are thinking it will satisfy us like the mighty dollar, like the mighty popularity, like our friends, families. But at the end of the day, you will find no matter how you spend what you, what you can in order to get these temporary things, at the end of the day, you will still say there's nothing that can really make you peaceful and joyful in this world. But there is one, and only Jesus can give it all to us. Amen? The woman, 
the woman at the well were enlightened. She began to, to go to the higher dimension of seeking, not just on the physical things, but on the things that he remembers promised to the children of Israel. Remember, she is also a descendant of Abraham, but probably a byproduct of so many things. I will discuss it to you along the way. Many people of the Assyrians... Water is for preservation of life, refreshing of the soul, and for comfort and for peace. That is the literal water. But Jesus Christ is giving a water. He said, it is for everlasting life and you will never thirsty again. What does it mean? Because water is for, for those things that just mentioned. When you take the, ever, the water that Jesus Christ gave, your life will be preserved. When you get that fresh living water that comes from Jesus, your soul will be refreshed. Meaning that all your worries, all your pains, all your frustrations will be replaced with a strength that you will desire to go on and move on. Not to think of suicide, not to think of giving up. Because what Jesus gives that she said to this woman will lead her for never be thirsty again. Give God the best clap of praise. And of course, the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit. Number two, looking for reconciliation in the midst of conflict. When the woman, when the woman recognized that Jesus is a Jew, probably Jesus Christ is wearing a turban. Probably he was wearing his uh, tassel that identifies the Jewish people separate from other people. Remember, the Samaritans' original seed or or DNA are Jewish. But they were intermarried to the Assyrians. So what happened to them? They adopted the culture of the Assyrians. They removed their clothing of, as a Jewish because they are not anymore pure Jewish people. Are you still with me? Like many of us, some of you look at your seatmate. Tell your seatmate, you're transforming. You look Canadian, look at your hair. It's supposed to be dark or black, but now it's brownish. You're changing your culture. And some of us also, when we came here to Canada, like this young CYN, when they first arrived in Canada the first year, they seldom speak English. They speak Po and Tagalog. But along the way, the parents were surprised. Because they started, before they arrived here, they called their mother and father, tatay and nanay. But after a few years, they say, mama, papa, mommy, daddy, yay. <laughs> and those things started. Now, this woman knows that there is already an existing gap or conflict with the Jew and the Samaritans. That's why he don't want to put him herself into jeopardy because people might stone her for talking to the Jewish or to this Jew person. He said in this word, that set the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it thou being a Jew, ask it, drink of me, which I'm out of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. How many people today are insisting on the differences of our religion? That when we, they see that we are holding the Bible, they say, okay, no, 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 no Bible. I'm, I'm a member of this religion. You belong to that. Why talking to me? The many killings today in our society are because of the differences of ideas, differences of religion. Let us not go far away just recently. There are so many killings and murders of Christians in different parts of the world every day. There are highlights of killings of Christians in the Middle East, in Syria, in Iraq, of course, in China that's seemingly supposed to be a, a country wherein everything can be allowed. Here in Canada, how many are being persecuted? Not only because of religious belief, but by the famous sexual orientation, the killings in Florida. Simply because someone does not agree with others, they begin to think of hurting if not killing them. And it's happening in our society. And why the church today are not able to reach out to people? Because rather than looking for an opportunity to reconcile, we are looking for difference. How many churches are divided? Because for the differences of ideas and opinions, of way of managing church, 
Our culture is going back to the place where Jesus Christ has already settled. But sad to say, the mindset of a woman in the, in, on that well are still influencing us. It's always influencing us. And simple food, cooking adobo, there are arguments. What is that adobo? Tagalog or Ilkano? When you chop, chop, chop the, the internal meat of, of pork, when it's cooked in Ilocano, they call it igado. When it's cooked in Manila, they, cook it, they call it minudo. <laughs> That's not igado. That's minudo. Why? Because Ilocano did it. What is this? That is not igado. That's minudo. What are the difference? Just a sauce. One is using a reddish one. One is using vinegar. <laughs> but the same thing. And people are arguing. And this is what the woman is bringing to Jesus. A conflict. But Jesus was so loving and caring. Because the woman now, not only on the conflict of not talking to each other, she brought Jesus Christ on the difference of expressing worship. He said, you Jews are saying we must worship God in Jerusalem. But we, our father said here in Mount Sherry, a certain mount there, and here in Samaria. And Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is a reconciling person. Rather than invoking that it must be in Israel, he said, no, not anymore about the location and the place. Because God is seeking a genuine worshipers of God. So it's neither in the place, but in the heart. When anyone, regardless of the race and religion, worship God in his spirit and in truth, it does not matter where you worship him. You can worship him inside the church, inside your house, even in your washroom while you are driving. Because God is seeking genuine worshipers. Give him the praise. Wow! Can you imagine if that woman's argument still stands today? How expensive it might be for us to worship. If only in Jerusalem we must worship. How many of us can afford traveling to Jerusalem? And when you arrive there, people will say, not here but there. And you go there. So what happened to people today? They worship now in all forms of religion. On, on first Sunday, they are in JIL. On second Sunday, they are in El Shaddai. And third Sunday, they are in Victory. And fourth Sunday, they are in Prince of Jesus. On fifth Sunday, they do not know where to come back. <laughs> Confusion starts simply because of some differences in doctrines and belief. How many times the church are divided? The doctrines of eternal security and conditional salvation. It's not the issue. The issue is the Savior. What's important is that you know you receive Him as Lord and Savior and you live according to His purpose and principles upon your life. Ladies and gentlemen, let the, the woman of, a, of, of the well, of a Samaritan woman, live there in the past. Here in the present, let us hear the message of Jesus. It's neither in Jerusalem nor in this mountain. For God is looking and seeking for genuine worshipers who will worship Him in His spirit and in truth. Give Him the best clap of praise. And third thing, the woman at the well is looking for the answer and she found it. There is a water that does not make you thirsty again. The woman was keep on looking and going there, satisfying her own soul. According to one commentary, they said that, the, the, that this woman probably, because she had already five husband, probably is about to become a senior citizen. And it is not a normal in the situation of the old, old the generation that an elderly will is still getting a water. Probably, look at Pastor Bong. Probably in all her marriages or relationships, she did not have any child. She is barren. And probably the only hope that she has is to serve his husband, her husband that is unknown, the one that, she is, that is not her husband. That's why Jesus Christ was so burdened to her that among the many who are coming to that well, Jesus chose her. 
like many of you today. Among the many who are passing by this church, God found you. Because He knows probably, He knows probably, like that woman at the well, you have nothing more to depend into. Probably you have even come here to Canada hoping that this government, this beautiful city heard and used as top, one of the top 10 countries in the world. Actually, many people are willing to sold, sold their soul just to enter Canada. They learn to make a lie. They change their name. They extend, extend their stay. But is there really good thing here in Canada? If not of God, this is just another country. If not of God, this is, not just, this is just another city. But when there is God, it does not matter where you are. Because God made a promise, I will supply all the things that you need according to His riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Amen. Give Him the best of praise. You are already in a position of experiencing God's provision. But if you will not honor Him, you will be like that woman at the well that until she met Jesus, she keeps on coming back, coming back and getting. Look at what her expression when Jesus Christ said, if you only knew who is asking to you for this water, you should have asked of Him the living water. The woman exposed herself of the reality of her life. She said, Lo, Master, if there is a living water, give it to me so that I will not come back here and be tired. How many of you are tired? How many of you are keep on working every day? At the end of the day, you look at how much you have brought home and you said, this is just this. Just this. Not even enough. And you look for another job. And when you get another job, you get, of course, another salary. But when you look at the mirror, you're older 10 years than yesterday. And as you bring home so many, so many resources and blessings, you just started to discover that your husband is getting another secret relationship. Your children is learning drugs. Or probably in an early relationship, you provide for them <coughs> all <coughs> the advanced technology. Before when they came, they come to you and say, when you arrive home, they say, Mama. But along the way, because you keep on working and providing for them, when you arrive home, even lay your head on your bed, your children does not even know you already arrived. Because they are there looking for Pokemon Go. Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Hmm. Give me that water, the woman said. Give me that water. How many today are not asking Jesus for that water? They keep on arguing. They are saying this is just a business. But the woman accepted that she is exposed. Saying to Jesus, Lord, or she just say, if there is that, give that to me. So that I will not be burdened in coming here. Burdened in coming here. How many people are burdened going to work how they wish every day is a holiday. But we know that's impossible. He said, but whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give shall never thirst. But the, <coughs> but the water that I shall give him, <coughs> the water. <coughs> refreshing. The water that I shall give him. A well of water is springing up to everlasting life. Look at what the woman said, verse 15. Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. Are you tired of trying, looking, and seeking? Listen to what the woman said to Jesus. Look, sir, give me that water. You ask him today, Lord, give me. I'm tired. Give me that refreshing water that will refresh my soul. Give me peace and give me comfort. Give him the praise. <laughs> Number four. Looking and receiving the peace he was looking. Obviously, the woman was exposed by Jesus. The woman, the Jesus said when Jesus, when, when the woman said to Jesus, give me that water. Jesus immediately go to the very root why the woman is thirsty, why the woman is prostrated and lonely. 
Verse 16, Jesus said to her, Woman, go, go, call their husband and come here. Why? Why did not Jesus respond and say, If you just believe in me, you shall receive? Like what he usually does or do. When blind Bartimeo said, When blind Bartimeo called upon Jesus, Have mercy on me in Mark chapter 10. And then Jesus called upon him. Jesus said, Jesus said, What do you want me to do to you? Bartimeo said, That I might receive my sight. Jesus said to, the, to, to Bartimeo, You already received it because of your faith. And in Mark chapter 5, there was a woman who had been bleeding for many, many years and about to dry up and die. Became poor because of she was looking for a medicine. She just touched the hem of Jesus' clothes and she got healed. In fear, she kneeled before Jesus because he just knew that power came out of him. Of, of him. And the woman said, I touch you, Lord. And Jesus Christ said, you are healed because of your faith. Why? Jesus Christ did not say to this woman who is asking, Give me that water, sir. Why did not just Jesus just said, Because you believe. You have it. Because Jesus knows there is something wrong that must make right to that person. Like to some people today, believing is not just enough. We must make things right. Wrong relationship is wrong. No matter how you justify it. Jesus Christ said to the woman, call your husband. Why? Because Jesus Christ wants to expose the woman to know that the reason why she is in that deepness of sorrow and trouble is because she is looking in a wrong place for what she is seeking. And she said, and admittedly said, said that I don't have a husband. And Jesus Christ said, yes, you say it right. Because you had five. And now the one that you have is not the one. How many women today are looking for a healthy relationship, exposing themselves, even giving up their bodies so that a man will honor them or respect their hair? But how many men abuse many women, taking advantage of their being weak and being longing to be cared for, being accepted? How many women were victimized in our society today that a man just removed his wedding ring and said to the girl on the other side of the, of, of the subway station, Hi, pa bebe. <laughs> and the other side of the woman will say, Lord, is that the answer to my prayer? How many today are in deep of sorrow? Because rather than seeking God, they seek their peace and comfort to other people. Jesus Christ said to the woman, call your husband. And the woman admittedly said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, you're right. You have no husband because you had five husbands and the one that you have today is not thy husband. <clears throat> Looking and receiving the peace, acknowledge that we need it. Not to be tired, getting temporary solution, acknowledge our sin. She said, it's not my husband. Let's go to the next slide. Jesus said, call your husband. Everybody say, call your husband. And the woman said, I don't have a husband. Look at your seatmate. Say your seatmate, I don't have a husband. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. Why? Look at me. Because husband supposed to take care of their wife, provide for their wife, understand their wife, protect their wife. You might be married, but you don't have a husband if they're not doing that to you. Husband, God gave us an accountability to take care of our woman, of our wife. Sometimes they are really breaking our pride and our patience. But that it does not give us license to lose our tempo, temper before them. We are the husband representing God. Amen? He said to the, the woman, said, I don't have husband. Look at your seatmate again, say, I don't have husband. I'm just married. I'm just married, but no husband. And the husband should also say, I don't have a wife. I'm just married. I'm just married. I don't have a wife. Why? Because the wife's supposed to submit to the husband. But many wives are saying, no, I don't like the color. I want mine. <laughs> Hello? Husband, say to your seatmate, I don't have a wife. I'm just married. The, the wife should be serving their husband. 
The wife should be preparing themselves to be attractive and loving to the husband. How many husbands today are flirting or having an extramarital relationship? Because when they arrive home, they thought that when they arrive home, they thought the woman that they married many years ago is now their grandmother. <clears throat> Look at your seatmate. Say to your seatmate, are you a wife or a grandma? <laughs> I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Call thy husband. Spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding. Your historical understanding. The Israelites intermarried with the Assyrians who had five tribes. Second Kings chapter 17, 24 to 40. What Jesus Christ was saying to the woman is, right now you have lost your identity. You were once like us. But because you, you fear the Assyrians, rather than coming to Jerusalem in order for you, the race of you which has been a covenant people with God. Look at me. A covenant people with God. You stay there because you don't want to lose your lots, your land, your property. You replace your covenant with God by having a covenant with these uncircumcised people. The Israelites in Samaria intermarried with the five tribes of Assyria. And in the generation to pass, they are not anymore Jewish people living in Samaria. But they are now Samaritans with the blood in them of the Assyrians, which God in the Old Testament wants them to be annihilated. God separated the Israelites to other people so that they will be God's covenant people. But the people chooses to be attracted with the material things of the Assyrians. Like many things that are happening today in the Christian world. There are many preachers are saying the church now becomes so worldly. We want to attract the world in the system of the world rather than attracting them in the ways of the Lord. That's why many people today does not even know we are Christian. We don't even pray when we eat, especially in public. That's why people does not know. That's why besides us, they can throw out green jokes and we don't say anything. We are like the Israelites who are now in compromise with the five tribes of the Assyrians. Are you still with me? Yes, Christ said, call your husband. And the woman said, I don't have a husband. Yes, because the five husband you had is not yours. Jesus Christ is saying to them, the people that you are living with is not supposed to be the people that you should be living with. You are the people of God, but you lost it. That's why salvation can be lost. They lost it. Are you still with me? Second thing. The moral understanding. The woman had been in different relationship looking for peace. The end, and it end up with a greater sorrow and sin. He was looking for someone to take care of her from one husband to another. She was divorced probably five times because it's only the man that can divorce. When she does not bear children, the man said, go out and look for someone else. And the someone else said, come in. The second one, after many days, she said, get out. He walked away. Uh, he uh, walk again in the highway probably and another man said come in and she stayed there again to be loved to be taken care of after a few months because she cannot deliver what many men are looking they said get out she looked again until she found Jesus my friends the genuine person that can love you and accept you no matter who you are is only one person and that is Christ Jesus <laughs> only him Oh, you need to give him the better, much, much greater clapping of hands. <clears throat> and finally, the theological understanding, the exposure of the Israelites to idols and false worship leads them to God's abandonment. God said, worship no other God but me. But because of the intermarriage of the Israelites to these Assyrians that make them Samaritans considered by the Jews as unclean people on that generation, why? Because of their false worship of many gods. Theologically, Jesus Christ is saying to the woman, the one you are worshiping is not the true God. It's not the one. That's why Jesus Christ said, genuine worshiper worship God in his spirit and in truth. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to experience God? Look at your house. If there are idols, God will never be there. Because God cannot be represented by any idols. 
whether it's gold or silver or diamond, God is greater. Glory here, His glory is far greater than anything that this world that He has created. That's why He wants a genuine worshiper. And today, if you can give it to Him, then you will find your peace because God's presence is where peace is. We cannot separate God from His peace. He said in John 14, 27, My peace I give to you, not as the world giveth peace. Let my peace dwell in you. And how can it be? When we honor the begotten Son of God. Ladies and gentlemen, let that woman on the well be you today. Believe in Christ Jesus and go home and spread to people. You have find, found the Messiah who gave you peace and accepted you no matter who you are. Give him the praise. I want everyone to arise, please. Thank you, Lord. Hands lifted up to him, heads bowed. And like that woman, let's make a journey. Replace that woman at the well with you. You were there in that well, probably your workplace. Probably your desire to stay here in Canada. You go, the woman said, the well is too deep. And sometimes you cannot even reach out to that deepness of the well. Sometimes what you can just bring home is good for you. Or probably just good for your loved ones and nothing is left to you. You remain poor, you remain unloved, you remain rejected, you remain confused. Until the day you come to a place like this. That Jesus is asking, give me water. Jesus is like asking, is there something good in you that you can give to me? And probably like that woman, you might say, Lord, who are you? A holy one to talk to me, a sinner. And probably Jesus Christ is also saying to you, if you only know who is asking you, you will ask forgiveness of him because he can accept you. And probably like that woman, you might also say, Lord, give me. By saying to him, Lord, forgive me. I want the life that you can promise as you have promised in your word. And probably the Lord will say, okay, then make things right. He needs, we need to confess whatever secret sins we have done. Because unless we confess it, no matter how he wants to bless us, he cannot. I'm, oh no, I'm already running out of time, but just a quick surrender to the Lord. Anyone in this place whom you know, you have something to confess and surrender to the Lord. A sin, secret sin, a weakness, something that you know is not pleasing to God. Probably even a wrong relationship. My, our worship team will sing a song just for three minutes. I want you to come to the altar. Kneel before Him on this altar and surrender to Him, Lord. Like saying, I don't have a husband. Whom I have today is not even my husband. Saying to Him, Lord, there is wrong in me. But even I'm looking as a source of my joy is not even pleasing to you. It does not really please me. So it's time to surrender it to the Lord. Sing the song please and run to the altar. We are running out of time. Run and come to Him and just say to Him, Lord, I surrender these things to you. Thank you, Lord. Come now, come. Come like that woman. Allow yourselves to be free. To be free. To be free. Vices. Drugs, alcoholism, fornication, adultery, anger, pride, poverty, those things, trusting in yourself. Lift up your hands, lift up your hands to Him. Come, husband and wife, come. The anger that divides you, bring it to the Lord. Children, that rebellion in your heart, bring it to the Lord. Yes. Yes, bring it to the Lord. Just bring it to the Lord. Oh God. Come, just bring it to the Lord. Yung pagod ninyo. You're tired. You're trying. Pumunta kay ng Canada para gumanda ang buhay, pero madalas nag-aaway. Now bring it to the Lord. Bring it to the Lord. The Lord. Let the world Just bring it to the Lord. Sickness and disease that makes you irritable, that makes you lose your self respect. You started to doubt God and make it place you into that kind of bondage. 
Say this prayer with me now, please. Heavenly Father, I admit I need you in my life. All my sin, I surrender to you. Lord Jesus, separate me, please, from my sin, from my bandages. And today, I declare you are my Lord and my Savior. In the name of Jesus, I give my life to you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Just lift up that hand and pastors, minister to them, please. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands and I pray in the name of Jesus. Everyone who come forward, I declare you free from all your struggles and from all your bondage. As our pastor lay their hands upon you, receive your deliverance, receive your peace. Touch of the Holy Ghost. Congregation, lift up your hands. Sing that song. Receive the peace of God. Ladies and gentlemen, there is the moving of the Holy Spirit in this place. Even those who are watching by a live stream, reach out to the Lord, lift up your hands, and let the touch of the Holy Ghost come upon you. I speak freedom from all your struggles. Get that fresh living water from the well of Jesus. Take that fresh living water. Receive. In the name of Jesus, the peace that passes all understanding. Receive the touch of the Lord. Receive. You are the peace that guards my heart, please. Let's declare it to him now. The peace that guards He's guarding your heart. Give it to him. Oh, listen to that whisper of Jesus. If you only know, he is asking you to give your life to him. You might have given all to him. For He will give you everlasting life. Amen. For there I'll find you waiting. Receive the blessing. It's okay to be honest to Him. My friends, may He embrace you with His love. May He embrace you with His peace. Receive. For you alone, oh, glory. For you alone, oh, yes, Lord. Ah, uh, lift up your hands. of God entering into your soul peace take a deep breath and receive that peace of God touch of God's peace touch of God's peace and brings me to my knees He will always be there waiting Those who are lovers of God, lift up your hands and say to Him, You're coming back to Him. No more compromise. Break your marriage with Assyria. Break your marriage. Break your relationship with the things that separate you from God.
Listen, the Spirit of the Lord is saying He is jealous of many and each and every one of us. But we need to go back to Him. Break your yoke with many forms of Assyrians. Do not intermarry with them, for the world will pollute your mind and your heart. When you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, you become His child. And as child, He is expectant of us that we adore Him and honor Him as our Father. All His precepts, rules, and all His principles must be the one that we embrace. The world is offering so many things. And when we accept it, we become confused and we do not even know who we are. Anger, pride, and arrogance will enter in. And even sin will consume the simplicity of our faith in Christ Jesus. Go back to Him, my friends. He's just waiting there at that well. When you come to Him, He will be there. And by the anointing of the name of Jesus and by His Spirit, I release upon you this strong conviction to live according to His will and according to His purpose. That you might learn to say no to sin and abhor sin and walk with faith and by faith. And every time that God looked down here on earth, He might see each and every one of you that He might show Himself strong in your behalf. And let the peace of God that passeth all understanding keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. And unto Him, all the glory.